This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this line portrait uh, sort of design using Inkscape and this will be very similar to a previous tutorial I made where I showed you how to make a line art style logo uh, using Inkscape. The only difference is in this tutorial I'm going to be using a different method. This is more of like a, uh, a revisit of that of that tutorial. I'm going to show you a better more efficient way I think anyway of going about doing this. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started here with Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. And now we're good to get started. So the first thing we want to do is set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. I'll go to File, Document Properties, and I want to set the display units to pixels. I want to turn off the visibility of the page border. And then we can close out of that. And then I want to go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then I'll open up the um, Align and Distribute menu with that button there. We're going to want Last Selected Chosen from this dropdown. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. And uh, I'm just going to hit Control B on the keyboard to get rid of those little scroll bars on the side, on the right, and the bottom, so I get more screen real estate to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag my photo into here. Well, it's, it's not a, it's not my photo; it's just a photo I found on the internet. You could use uh, something similar if you'd like. I'm just going to click and drag this into here. I'll put a link to this photo in the description of the video if you'd like to use it yourself. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit. I'll hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opacity of this and bring that down about maybe to like, uh, I guess 60%. Because we're, we're going to want to be able to see, we're going to be drawing on top of this. And we're going to want to be able to see what we're doing better than what we see uh, of the photo. So um, once we've done that, we can click off of that to deselect it. I'm going to go over to the circles and ellipses tool. And I'm just going to hold control and shift and click and drag on the keyboard to create a perfectly round circle. I'm going to change mine from white to black. Uh, I'll take the select tool, I'll bring this over here. And the opacity, we're going to want the opacity somewhere in half like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this circle up to here. And what we're looking at here is the intersecting area between these two circles. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take that intersecting area and stretch it out to create the different lines going around the prominent, uh, the, the prominent areas of this photo. So. Once we have it positioned something like that, I'm just going to click and drag over both of those to the select them. I'll go to Path, Intersection. And then I want to bring this over here. Let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. I'm going to zoom in on the face a little bit by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'll take this shape and I'll hold Control and Shift and just scale that down so it's like maybe like a little smaller than the eye like that. And once we've done that, I'm just going to put this off to the right. I'm going to right click that and go to copy or you can hit control C and we'll click off of that to deselect everything and what we want to do now is come over here to our Bezier pen the keyboard shortcut would be B and up here where it says mode we want this selected create regular regular Bezier path and the shape we want to choose from clipboard and what that's going to do is that's going to use whatever we have copied as a reference to, to uh, fill in the lines that we create with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line here for the eyebrow. So let me hold control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to click right here to create a point and then I'll come over here to the end of the eyebrow and then click and drag. Click and hold the click and drag to create this line where you can change uh, its shape and appearance like that. Just like that and go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to put a line going along. It's going to take that shape here as you saw, it's going to take this shape and stretch it out along that path. And what we could do now is go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And what we'll see here is we'll see a little node that you can just click and drag and pull it out to make this line thicker or thinner. So this was much easier than that that other tutorial I did where you have to make the lines bigger and smaller by scaling them up and down and then converting them to paths. This, I, I'm not sure, this might be a new feature. I haven't seen this yet in Inkscape, but whatever this is, uh, I really like this. This makes it really easy to work with. So I'm going to make this line about that thick like that. And I'm just going to go around and create lines going around all the prominent parts, like around the hair and the nose and everything. Uh, I'm going to make that a little thinner, actually. And the idea is to make these lines all consistent in thickness, so or try your best to anyway. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the Bezier pen, and I'm going to create a line right here for the nose. I'll click. I'll come over here, and then cl just click and drag to create a shape going along the nose and hit enter. 
and now I'll, I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. I'm just gonna use the keyboard shortcuts for this. I suggest you do the same thing because it'll save you a lot of time, uh, you know, having to go back over here and click on stuff. I'm just gonna press N on the keyboard and I'm just gonna pull this line out just like that. And now I'm gonna press B on the keyboard to go back to the, to the uh, Bezier pen. And I'm gonna create another path going along this shape of the nose right here. Well, you know what, I may have to edit that a little bit. Okay, well, I'm going to press N and go back to this. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on these nodes. You can click and drag the line and edit it. As you see, I'm doing here. You might have to click and drag the line in order to get that handle coming out of this node right here. Something like that. Um, move that in. Put this over here. And I'm going to take this and just make this a little thicker like that. And that right there looks pretty good. And what I'll do now, I'm going to create another line going along the uh, forehead here. So I'll press, actually, I'm going to make that a little thinner. That's better. I'm going to create another line going along the forehead. So I'll press B on the keyboard to get uh, the Bezier pen. And to move the page around like this, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Or we could just press down the space bar and move the mouse. That'll work as well. Um, okay, so what I'll do now is I'll click to create a point and I'll bring this over here. Or right, you know what? I have to undo that. I'm gonna turn off the snap to uh, I'm gonna the uh, enable snapping. I'm gonna turn that off because it just snapped to that point, which I don't want for this tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna bring this right down here like that. Maybe do something like that, and then just press Enter to create the line. I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I'm gonna click on this node to see if we got a handle. We have a handle coming out of this one right here that we can manipulate, but we don't have a handle coming out of here. And if you notice, sometimes it changes. It like messes with the uh, the path of the shape here. It makes this part of it flat. So I'm gonna try to just click and drag that line to just maneuver it a little bit. And this can be a little tricky sometimes. There we go, I got it there. You'll really have to play around with it sometimes to really get that uh, shift to happen so it grabs it. And once you've done that, now you can click on the node and you should have a little handle there that you can manipulate further. And let me come over here. Oops. Let me come over here and make this, fix this accordingly. Maybe I'll just put this here like that. Make this a little bigger with that handle there. Maybe make that a little bit bigger. And I'll go through and I'll do some more. I'm gonna press B to get back to the Bezier pen. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna start creating lines for the hair right here. So I'll just click and drag, click to create a point and then click and drag to create the uh, curve. Press N to go back to the uh, uh, paths tool. And then just click and drag that line. There we go. We just want to get those handles to pop out. Now that we have those handles, we can go ahead and adjust the uh, the path that the line takes, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here and you know create everything and fill it all in, and then I'll get back to you then. Okay, so as you can see, I've went around and filled in the rest of this image, creating these little lines going along the prominent lines of the photo here. If you notice here, um, I left a few areas out. I could do the eye a little bit. I could actually do a little more of the mouth, which I'll do right now. Uh, just, you know, like I mentioned previously, you click to create a point, and you, then you click and drag at the second point. You hit enter to create the line. Go back to the edit paths by nodes tool and just sometimes you're going to go to click these nodes and there's going to be no handle there. So what you do is you take, you just click and drag the line itself and then this little handle will pop out, which you will need to really form the, uh, to make the, um, the shape take the form that you'd like. So maybe something like that right there. I'm going to use this little circle node to increase the thickness, just like that. And let me 
zoom back out and see how that looks. I'm going to create the eye now. Let's go back to the Bezier pen. Click and drag. Just like that. Hit enter. And again, I'll go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. The keyboard shortcut is, is N for the Paths tool. And then for the uh, Bezier pen is B. So this whole time, I'm just going back between B and N on the keyboard. Make that a little bigger. Do the same thing down here. Again, clicking B on the keyboard. Go just like that. I'll just adjust this a little bit. Take this line, make that dip out a little bit like that. I'll take this, make that line a little thicker, and then finally just create one little uh, one little slant, slanted uh, or actually curved shape over here for the eyeball. Just like that, and put this over here. Maybe I'll put this up there more. Maybe make that a little thicker, not much. For these smaller details, you might have to make the lines not as thick as the rest of them. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the Select tool. I'm just going to take this image and move it out of the way to see how it looks. And I think this came out pretty good. If you want to put it back, you can hit Control z on the keyboard um, to put it back where it was. And one thing you might want to do is go back and make each line th either thicker or thinner to match the... Um, the uh, match the rest of the lines so everything looks consistent something like that like I notice like these hair these hair lines over here they don't they're not quite as thick as the rest of the objects like that but um, yeah, maybe these ones over here maybe I'll make those a little thicker and you probably get the idea by now I'm just gonna leave that how it is for the moment for the time being what I'm gonna do is once I'm finished and once I'm happy with how everything looks I'm going to click and drag over everything, and I'm going to create a duplicate copy of it by hitting Control D. And what you're going to notice is, once you take this over, I'm just going to take this duplicate copy. Once you try to like enlarge it or shrink it, it's going to change the shape of the lines. Like if you try to make this smaller, it's going to make the lines thicker, and it's not going to. It's going to make the lines thicker like that. It's just going to look like a a mess. Like you can't even see what's going on there. So let me undo that. And the same thing, if you try to make it bigger, it's going to make the lines really thin. So in order to stop that, once we're once we've finalized everything and it's how we like it, it's at a thickness that we like, we can finalize it by going to path, object to path. And now you can scale it up or down and it'll keep the same proportions, just like that. And if you want, you can even go and color this in with different colors now because we've uh, go ahead and we've uh, we've went ahead and finalized that. So that's how you can create these line portraits using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.